If you're having a hard time trying to find the roots of a nonlinear equation, then the Newton Raphson method might come quite handy. When certain assumptions of this system are fulfilled, the Newton Raphson method is guaranteed to converge to a solution. Isaac Newton described a special case of a method in his book written in 1669, from which the name Newton's method is derived. In 1690, Joseph Raphson, an English mathematician, published a simplified description of the system for approximating the roots of an equation in his book. The intuition of this method is quite simple. Let's say we have this given function at hand and we want to find its roots. That is the point at which this function evaluates to zero. In this case, intersects the x-axis. We begin with a guess solution. Let's say x0 equals to 4. Then we draw a tangent line of our function at x0. This red tangent line would intersect the x-axis at x1. So x1 is now our updated candidate solution. We repeat the process again and the second tangent line intersects the x-axis at x2. We can see that with just two iterations in this case, we are quite close to the true solution of this equation. With each iteration, the difference between the updates gets smaller and smaller at a quadratic rate until the updates are not substantially different enough from one another. That is when we stop the iteration and find a solution to the problem. So, the Newton's method is basically starting with an initial guess about the solution to the equation and then updating the guess every time using the derivative of the function. But there are some issues to be kept in mind as well. This technique can fail miserably in situations when some conditions are not satisfied. Firstly, the derivative of the function evaluated at the guess should not be equal to zero. Otherwise, the denominator of the updating factor would be zero. The second order derivative of the function should be continuous within a given interval. And lastly, the initial guess should be sufficiently close to the root of the function. Let's take a look at some situations when this system can fail to give us an answer. Consider this univariate function. We can see that it has a maximum at x equals to zero and roots at minus one and plus one. Picking zero as the starting value and running the algorithm would end up with a zero division error. That is the new update x1 will be undefined and the algorithm would fail to converge. In this case, starting with any value other than zero would give us a solution to the function. Now let's consider the function x cubed minus two x plus two. If we start with zero as the initial guess, then the next update we would get is 1. And the next update we get is 0. And the next would be 1 again. You can see what's happening here. If 0 is set as the starting value, then the algorithm will keep moving between 0 and 1 forever, and it would never yield a solution to the function. A final example is one where the iterations diverge from the solution. For the cubic root of x, with any starting point xn, the next iteration point would be xn plus 1 equals to minus 2xn. This means the algorithm would diverge from the solution at each iteration unless the solution is guessed on the first try. So yes, the Newton method can go bad in a variety of situations, but with a well-behaved real-valued function, which is most often the case in economics, if the newton raphson method catches the scent of a root, it will hunt it down with amazing speed. In the next video, we will take a look at how to find the roots of a multivariate function in Python. Until then, stay safe.